What are some moments in movies that made you go up? It doesn't work like that. When a baby is born and it's a beautiful, squeaky clean 3-6 month old twice the size of a newborn. They are tiny, goo covered, swollen purple aliens are all. There was a scene in the G.I. Joe Cobra movie where they torpedo icebergs, and then they sank. Yeah, ice doesn't change its density to be heavier than water just because explosions. Pretty much any scene that involves biologists. Look, the DNA is a perfect match, as the computer superimposes two identical graphics that are basically just the symbol for DNA. Avalanches. Particularly when someone gets buried and then just bursts out of the snow unharmed. Avalanche debris sets like concrete. You're not getting out without help. And most deaths injuries occur from being bashed up during the slide. So you're not likely to emerge unscathed if it's big enough to bury you. Frantically shouting taxi while hailing a cab. Every time they perform CPR in a movie. Bonus points if the victim wakes up immediately and is totally fine and talking. An explosion nearby and everyone talks and hears fine. I love that scene and the other guys about this. The extent that people can get punched in the face and just keep going. No one is having Jason Bone style fights and able to keep going for as long as they all do. I watched a movie once where geologists ignored signs of a massive natural disaster. Blaming it on sensors. Tell me if I'm wrong but I feel like real scientists don't hesitate to double check. Edit. Seems like scientists ignore sensors in a lot of movies. Dante's Peak. The Day After Tomorrow. Spider-Man. And 2012. I'm specifically talking about the wave. Colon 15 seconds of keyboard clicking. I'm in. Now we have access to all the super secret classified government files and can control anything that runs on electricity anywhere in the world. When they pull the fire alarm, and the sprinkler set off, when a lighter sets a sprinkler off, it will, and all the heads go off. Each head is independent of all others, and set off by heat. My dad was a pipe engineer for 35 years. Every time he watches the Titanic, when Jack is handcuffed to the pipe, he has to point out to everyone in the room how the curved elbow pipe in the shot didn't exist at the time. The correct setup should have been two straight pieces soldered together to make a corner pipe. I love him and his obscure dad facts. Edit. I just showed this to my dad. He's not familiar with Reddit. But he appreciates the love. It's always a pet peeve of mine when in movies. They're working on a computer and the thing is constantly chirping and beeping with some kind of dumb sci-fi looking interface to it. Like dude, we all have computers now. We all know software doesn't do that and if it did it would be annoying as hell. I've even seen scenes, can't remember which movies, where they're clearly using photoshop or something similar and it's constantly making little sci-fi noises. Pretty much any scene where there's some magic computer program that turns blurry, heavily pixelated images into razor sharp photos? Yeah, that doesn't exist crawling through air ducts. Most aren't that big. Or they aren't that strong to not bend or break at all. Edit. Yes they are also incredibly filthy. I have taken out enough duct work to know that you could almost create another person with how many skin cells end up in your air ducts. I also am not doubting the strength of the large threaded support some duct work has. I'm doubting the strength of the 20 gauge metal to not end bend in the slightest under the weight of a full grown man. When someone cocks the hammer on a Glock. The protagonists and antagonists fighting on the streets and not giving a it about thousands of people dying while the cars explodes and buildings falls. Pumping the shotgun every time you mean business. You are just ejecting fresh shells onto the floor. Our hero is beaten. Stabbed and shot. Next scene he wakes up bandaged in the hospital. Within seconds. He yanks out all the tubes and wires jumps out of bed, finds his, suddenly clean, clothes, and rushes out to continue his quest. In the next scene he's full of energy as he pursues his foe, and while his face may have a single scratch or bandage cut, usually above one eye, there's no sign of what would ordinarily be a yellow purple swollen pulpy mess with blood red eyes. All the movies with science babble in them, or tech babble, all of them, at least it's pretty funny. Just stick dark energy or quantum physics somewhere. 
the quantum dark energy is spreading to his ass. Hacking is babbling about I'm in and you always have to trace the source I'm pretty sure. I'm in his hente collection. Tracing the sources now. Basically anytime they show lab work being done, they either don't wear PPE, or they do wear it but don't wear it properly, or for the right things. Food beverage chewing gum in a lab is a big big no. If some character in a drama TV show walked into my lab demanding results, the first thing I'd do is give them safety glasses. When someone shoots 1000000000000000000 bullets with a single magazine and a pistol but then it runs out when they have an actual shot at someone. If someone is falling, and say Superman catches them, they're actually ducked because the forces involved are still going to tear them apart. Superman would have to catch them and decelerate them over time. But this almost never happens. He just catches them. You also can't just lift an enormously heavy object. The object has to have the structural integrity to remain in one piece. All that pressure at one point, Superman's hand, would make the object break apart. Edit. Okay. Superman was just the first example I could think of, and they happen to have explained it. It happens in a lot of other things. Particularly the whole catching someone who's falling thing. Almost any scene involving someone being shot or stabbed, it always takes me out of the movie when say someone will be like you'll never believe what's on the news. Put it on. Their TV is off. They turn the TV on. And it's on the exact station of said news crew. At the exact moment they're talking about I said topic. That's not how it works. And it could be anything. Not just news. They turn on the TV and it just so happens to be on what they're looking for. Just a small aspect of television movies that takes me out of it and I'm always like that's not how this works. LOL. Not a movie but in the show you when he gives that guy the latte with nuts in it and he drops dead less than a minute later. Now, it takes a bit longer than that. It would be a much longer, painful demise. Characters making perfect sentences without stuttering or making pauses. 90% of the depictions of women going into labor. It's rarely mom feels fine all day more than suddenly has one sharp contraction more than water immediately breaks and makes a puddle on the floor. Everyone I know who's given birth has had at least a few hours contracting before the water breaking, if it breaks at all, and then it can be even longer before you're in active labor. When hackers just spam random letters to hack. Telling co-workers to cover your shift on the fly like okay like I don't have to run it by the manager and the manager doesn't have to do a whole bunch of computer it beforehand to fix the hours up. People in movies being scientists. Meaning they are good at all forms of science. Biology. Electrical engineering. Physics. Programming. Communication protocols. Advanced mathematics. Hacking. Robotics. Sure. You could have some knowledge in all of those fields. But specializing in just one of them takes decades. These characters are usually wizards in all fields. One that always gets me is when medical professionals shock a flatline heart rhythm. Just about every movie where anything does anything in space. I can count the exceptions on one hand. Ships burning prograde into re-entry. Maneuvering hilariously close. And 99% of the time burning in the wrong direction. Imagine an action movie where everyone runs into the big fight shooting themselves in the head as if that would kill their enemy. It's painful. There is no cleaning up before or after 6. Everyone is just ready to go all the time. In Interstellar when they have combines running through a field of green corn. They spent a ton of time getting little details of astrophysics right. Then fell flat on their face in the depiction of farming. Without going into full detail, when I was stopped and cops handcuffed me to take me to the station, no one said you have the right to remain silent. Yada yada. Every moment in 99.9% .9 of all romantic comedies. I refuse to see the movie Lucy because it was based around the myth we only ever use 10% of our brain. Like, no we don't, we use the whole thing. We cannot just unlock our brains with fancy tech or drugs and suddenly have telekinesis and it. The movie 2012. Just like dart all of it. There's the trope of people in advertising having to stay late around the holidays. 
rushing to finish up the holiday campaign for the new client and having to choose between their career and their family, yeah, that would not happen very often. In reality the holiday campaign would have been finalized quite some time ago after months of planning. Back and forth with the client. Reviewing layouts proofs. ETC. Around the holiday season we would most likely be working on planning stuff for the spring summer of the next year. Most explosions. I was in ammo and it ruined most movies for me. They're still fantastic movies and I love them all. But when a building explodes you're not gonna walk out casually barely beating the flames. And those thousands of pieces of wood aren't all going to magically not impale you as they're hurdled all around you with incredible force. That thing where a tech lab procedure suddenly takes half the time because someone offers to pay more. Oh no. If it needs to be centrifuged for 24 hours it's still going to take 24 hours even with 100k on the table. Also not as jarring. But everyone always wakes up with perfect makeup and no one ever seems to clean their face. Rolling out of a speeding car. Nah man. You're about to look like you made out with a cheese grater. It's more of a troop. But the idea that one person designs security systems. Like in Die Hard 4. One genius supposedly designed the computer network for the FBI or whatever and left back doors. And no checks on him or his software. Just blind trust in some random stranger. That's not how computer systems are designed. Especially for government agencies. And no one person could manage the scope either. People getting knocked out and waking up a bit later. Shaking their heads. And then heading off like normal. Getting knocked out is not like lightly bumping your head on something. Movies set a long time ago trying to emulate people from 500, 2000 years ago but they all have perfect skin and white teeth. Sorry if someone has already commented this. I didn't want to scroll through all of them. Chloroform. It takes several minutes to knock you out. And you won't be out for that long. I promise I know this because we use chloroform to clean stuff in the lab I intern at. And my advisor told me this. In case the FBI is reading this. Firearm discipline in almost any movie. TV show. No one asked how to correctly clear a room? Really? And Jesus Christ your gun just swept right across your partner's head. Why? Every movie scene where anyone is using a chainsaw. They don't start from cold with just one pull. They need a little while to warm up. And you sure as it can't cut through flesh and bone without ducking that chain up real good. Looking at you. Evil dead. The neutrinos are mutating. Minus 2012. Neutrinos can't ducking mutate. They can't even decay. In the disaster movies people don't hoard toilet paper. Scenes that involve swimming. I try to hold my breath whenever a movie character, non-superhero fantasy, dives underwater and try to hold it as long as he she is swimming or submerged. I end up dying 9 stroke 10 times. I mean there's probably a lot of things to consider but the amount of time some characters can hold their breaths is superhuman. Every single movie where somebody dies and then someone closes their eyes. And their eyes stay shut. Anytime sword fighting or fencing in a movie is related to dancing. Looking at you pirates of the Caribbean and God. It's the exact opposite of dancing. The point is to have a completely unpredictable tempo and. If your opponent does have a specific rhythm. To interrupt it in unpredictable ways. Source. Fenced for 10 years. In the opening of Prisoners. He is hunting deer in PA before Thanksgiving. The big ass computer room in the basement of the airplane where 6 special ops soldiers can hide. They would sell seats down there if there was that much room. Dude walks up to a bar and orders beer and gets it no questions asked. Hitting animals with tranquilizer darts and they collapse immediately. The reality is that it can take 30-45 minutes for an animal to go down completely. Longer if the animal is agitated. This is why when kids fall into gorilla pits. The lethal weapons are used. Responders don't have 30-45 minutes to wait for a large, agitated dangerous animal to stumble around and possibly injure someone. The response has to be immediate. And tranquilizers don't do that. Pretty much the entire Fast and the Furious franchise is a big it doesn't work like that. Also happy cake day. 
The amount of time between responses in phone conversations. Hi mom. 1.37 seconds later. What do you mean Larry and his ferret were hit by a scooter in Moscow? I've been in IT for 35 years. So damn near every movie that has any tech in it has some stupid it. It's even more irksome when they could have been accurate. But didn't. I might get some down votes for this. But in John Wick 2 in the subway when John and Common are shooting at each other stealthily with silencers. That's so ducking and realistic. That it would have been so loud. And echoing throughout the subway station. Joker when Arthur Fleck shoots a Smith & Wesson Model 36 and shoots 8 bullets on the train but the gun model only can store up to 5 bullets. Pretty much any time someone is hacking. Or firing a gun indoors and not being deaf. After shooting a couple rounds from a pistol, then they tuck the gun inside their waist. You don't do that in real life. Very hot muzzles yo. EP pen usage. You have to call the ambulance or rush to the hospital after administering it. EP pens are not a magical fix they simply buy you enough time to get to medical care. It bothers me relentlessly when movies show someone being given an EP pen and they just take a big gasp of air and go back to eating dinner like nothing happened. Pretty much everything to do with sleeping. No awkward clean up after doing the deed. Ever so gently waking up in a room that is already brighter than the sun. Immediately kissing and talking right at each other without recoiling from morning breath. Perfect hair and makeup. Both going to bed and waking up. The infamous L-shaped sheet of modesty. TV butchers most ultrasounds. Because of TV and movies people seem to be under the impression ultrasound techs just scan babies. In actuality that is one stroke 3 RD of the job. At least twice a week I have a 60 something year old man ask if it's a boy or girl as I'm gelling up his beer belly. Sir unless you ate a baby there shouldn't be one in there and I can only fake laugh so many times without dying a little inside. Individual rooms in a hospital are not surrounded by glass so anyone can look through. H.I.P.A.A. Almost every damn scene involving a semi-truck. Anytime paintball is shown in a movie, the idiots keep taking their mask off during a game. While shooting is going on, those things are meant to protect your eyes, not just look cool. How beautiful depression and disorders are. How it makes you so dainty and pretty and soft. If you threw up your guts every night you would not be bright eyed and gentle with luscious hair and strong nails. If you were depressed you aren't sitting prettily. And looking mysterious. And don't get me started on how suicides are not that easy. Nor that painless and perfect. Every time some action hero dude jumps off a really high place barehanded using a rope. No rope burn? Is this a cartoon? When a movie thinks that people with autism are like superhumans. They just have random powers like being super smart and instantly recognizing patterns and it. Not exactly how it works. Autism is like having a glitchy brain. Not some sort of supercharged intellect. The way people in the military talk in movies just kills me. I don't care so much about getting some details wrong. And these days the advisors seem to do pretty well with keeping it realistic enough to pass. But no military advisor can help bad dialogue. I'll put it this way. Actors are so bad at being convincing military members. Capital R. Leomi famously did the role himself in Full Metal Jacket after being initially hired on only as an advisor. Specifically, it's all of the stupid it writers think we say to each other. No one will ever ask permission to speak freely. They just ducking speak. We don't salute constantly. It's used as a greeting. Not something we do as we leave to carry out orders. We are not that formal. It gets ridiculous watching these actors talk like robot people and overuse jargon. Like, I'm not using brevity codewords in normal conversation, unless I'm being a smartass. Military people just talk normally. Formality is pretty much limited to ceremonies. When you're in trouble, or if you are addressing people way senior to you in some kind of formal setting, even then, plain speak is more common than over the top sir sandwiches, and out of place jargon. So many military related things, clumsy uniforms, ranks that make no sense, general misunderstandings of military culture and practices. Every Hallmark movie to ever exist, customers and employees don't act like that, not everyone in the office except for this one peculiar lady is a mass to what, 
and not every single person who you compete with is going to screw you over with murder, kidnapping, or sabotage. Ugh. In movies where the woman sees a guy with his hand on some woman's shoulder, or his hand on her hand at a table, and immediately it's just fact that he cheated, no questions, no actual discussion between the couple, ruins the movie for me. Also, recent music themed movie had a scene near the end, where the female protagonist essentially said to the guy, I have been waiting over a decade for you to make a move on me, I never made a move on you myself nor did I even tell you how I felt. However, despite that, it is now your responsibility to make a decision about us, right here, right now. Also despite the fact that literally your entire career is on the line if you don't leave right this second. But, you know, ultimatum, relationships don't work like that. I always hate in movies when a conversation starts, then characters have to travel somewhere together, then they get to their destination and pick up where they were before the travel. Like why tf would the conversation not keep going in the car or whatever, or when phone's doorbells ring at exactly the right time, or when characters walk in when queued up as if they can hear everything perfectly when they really shouldn't be able to. When the guy stalks the girl and gets the girl in the end. Any scene in a bank, no, normal banks do not just have stacks and stacks of money and or gold bars in them, also. You can't just go into a bank with a huge check and get it all in cash. They need to know ahead of time because they intentionally don't keep more money on the premises than necessary because duh. Bank robberies. When some random person in a bar yells out next round is on me. Everybody cheers. And the bartenders instantly start handing out drinks without ever talking to the person or getting any kind of payment. The fact that instantly after an injury, the next shot shows the person is already bandaged. You need to go to the hospital. What are you? The Flash? 